Okay guys, so I'm gonna go over the worked out solutions for the uh, trust problem that you guys had uh, before we went on spring break. So uh, I'm gonna try to go slowly so you guys can understand uh, how we get all the reaction forces and how we get all the member forces for the truss that we're gonna solve. <clears throat> so uh, first thing you need to do is realize that roller forces have one reaction force and pin forces have, or pin supports, I'm sorry, have two reaction forces, uh, roller supports have one reaction force. So it's basically a matter of choice which way do you want to um, choose the direction to go. I, I usually have, or actually roller supports usually go perpendicularly to whatever surface they're on. So I'm going to go ahead and make that reaction force go perpendicular to the wall, which is that way. Um, that being said, uh, we usually label these as R, <clears throat> reaction force, uh, in this case at the joint A with respect to the x-axis because it's going in the x-direction. So I label that as RAX. Um, <clears throat> pin supports in this case have two reaction forces. Uh, pin supports reaction forces usually react going opposite to whatever is being uh, done upon them. So in this case, since I had my reaction force go this way, I'm going to have my pin support reaction go in the opposite way so it can balance out the forces in the x-direction. So I'm going to make that go to the left. So this will be the reaction force at B with respect to x, RBx. Let's go over a little bit. Um, <clears throat> this will be the reaction force at B with respect to y. Now, which way do you guys think I'm going to make it go up or down? If you notice, this is already going down. I'm going to make this go up. Now, for whatever reason, I didn't realize that these two guys are going in the opposite direction. I just kind of winged it and uh, put some random directions in here. It's fine. Our math will actually tell us at the end that we're wrong if we get a negative answer, and we just have to change it back at the end. So this will be the reaction force at B with respect to Y. <clears throat> okay, let's solve this. So, um, we are going to have the sum of the moments. Actually, so if I, if, I, if I have the steps, so step zero says make sure you guys have a pencil. I, I have a pencil already. Step one, make sure that your truss is statically determined and solvable with the formula 2J equals M plus R. A lot of you guys got that down already, so I'm going to put it up here. <clears throat> 2J equals M plus R. J is the number of joints. Uh, M is the number of members or poles or beams, however you want to call these lines, and R is the reaction forces. Now, we just figured out that there are three reaction forces, so it's going to be something plus three. Member is the number of poles. We count the number of poles. We have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five members. And then we have two times the number of joints. The number of joints in this case, we have joint C, joint D, joint B, and joint A. So it's going to be four. If we solve this, we get 8 equals 8, so this is actually determinant. So, uh, this will be statically determinant, so we can actually go ahead and solve this. This is an ugly, happy face. Anyways, moving on. <clears throat> so, after you know that you can actually solve this, uh, the next thing would be to use the equation, some of the forces, uh, in the x direction or use the sum of the moments um, equal to zero. So some of the forces equal to zero in the x or y direction, some of the moments equal to zero. I always like to start with the sum of the moments about the pin. So look for the pin. Whatever the pin is, that's two reaction forces. Take the moments about that. That would be the next thing you can do or the first thing you can do that will give you an unknown right away for your reaction forces. So I'm going to go ahead and then uh, take <clears throat> some of the moments about the pin. In this case, the pin happens to be at B, so I'm going to call this some of the moments about B. And then that should be equal to zero at the end if we do it correctly. So we're going to take the sum of the moments in this case, uh, basically take the distance multiplied by the force. So in this case, we don't have to worry about RB, X and RBY because they happen to be where the I'm taking the moments about. I'm going to take the moments away in this case. So this distance is 4 multiplied by C, which is going in this direction. This is going to be turning it to the right, which would be clockwise. That would be in the negative angle or negative direction. So I'm going to call this as uh, negative 4 multiplied by 
1,000. And it, again, we said it was going to be in the negative direction, so I'm going to put a negative in front of the 4. Because it's going clockwise. Um, the only other force I have to worry about is Rax, and that, that is a distance away, which is this distance right here. Now, if you remember <clears throat> from before we actually uh, worked on the problem, we figured out that 45 uh, degrees is the angle of depreciation, which happens to be the same thing here. And if this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, that means that this side has to be equal to this side. So then this distance has to be equal to 2. So if this is 2 and this is 2, that means that when I want to take the moment about this, I take a distance 2 away, and this is going to be going, the, the reaction force at A will be pushing it in this direction, which is going to be in the positive angle or positive uh, moment, which would be counterclockwise. So this, is, this will be plus 2 multiplied by the force, which we don't know yet, Rax. And then that should be equal to 0 at the end. <clears throat> okay, so if you solve this, um, you're going to get negative 4 times 1,000, so negative 4,000, plus 2 Rax equals 0. Once you solve for that, you get Rax is equal to 4,000 divided by 2, which gives you 2,000 pounds of force. Notice that my answer is actually a positive. Positive answers means that your direction was correct. So since I get a positive answer, I know that my direction was right. I don't have to change it. If I would have gotten negative 2,000 pounds here, I would have to change this going the other direction. But in this case, it's all good. So we keep going with the problem. Um, let's try to figure out the other forces, but this time I'm going to use some of the forces because it's a much easier formula. Some of the forces in the x and the y direction. So some of the forces, let's do the x direction. So some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. The only forces in the x direction are Rax, which is going to the right. That means we're going to have a positive. And then Rbx, which you can barely see. So Rbx is going to the left, so it's going to be a negative. <clears throat> and the sum of the forces should be equal to zero, so we add them up and set them equal to zero. Um, we know Rax, so that's going to be 2,000 pounds. So this will be 2,000 minus Rb equals zero. Therefore, when you solve this, Rb obviously has to be equal to 2,000 pounds of force. All right, so all we got to do now is take the sum or some of the forces in the y direction to figure out the un the other unknown RBY. Sorry, this should be RBX, and I forgot to label it. So RBX, RBX. So some of the forces in the x direction. Um, the next one will be some of the forces in the y direction, which the only thing is RBY. So RBY, and then that's up. Therefore, it's going to be a positive. This one's down, so it's going to be minus the 1,000 pounds of force equals zero. When you solve this, you get RBY is equal to 1,000. Okay, so we have our reaction forces. What now? So uh, usually I like to go ahead and redraw this. Uh, go ahead and redraw it, and then basically wherever uh, it wherever all these forces belong uh, just label the forces all the reaction forces on the outside without worrying about what are whatever is in this case what I mean by that is I'm gonna label this as pin B pin A um, just redrawing this so there's um, so joint B joint A uh, this is joint C this is joint D All right, this is 45 degrees, this is 45 degrees. <clears throat> and now, since I already know everything on the outside, I'm going to go ahead and just forget the R's and just say, okay, this is going to be a 2,000 pound force going that direction. This is going to be a 2,000 pound force going that direction. This is going to be a 1,000 pound force going in that direction. And there is going to be a 1,000 pound force for the load going in this direction.
Okay, so we have our updated drawing. Now we're gonna use the method of joints to calculate um, our unknowns. Basically, it's up to you where you guys wanna start. I usually like to start at the joints uh, that have the least number of members. For example, joint A and joint C has the least number of members, meaning that they're probably gonna be easier to solve. So if they're gonna be easier to solve, why not just start there? So we're gonna do the calculations at joint A. So calculations. Calculations at joint A. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little more here because I guess the rest doesn't really help us right now. <clears throat> um, so all we have at joint A is the following. So if we have joint A, we have member AB, so from A to B, and then member AD, so from A to D. So we're looking at uh, this right here, this joint. So that's all we have in terms of joint A. So if we take the sum of the forces in the X direction, well, guess what? There is, oh, you know what? I forgot one thing. So there is a 2,000 pound force from the outside going in this direction. So we take the sum of the forces in the X direction, set that equal to zero, which means that we're going to have um, member AD and the 2,000 pounds of force. Notice that they're both positive because they're both going to the right, and we set that equal to zero. When we solve this, we realize that AD is actually going to be negative 2,000, which means that this is actually going to be in compression, which means that our drawing is wrong. So if we go back to the drawing, we need to fix that. So AD is no longer supposed to be going away from the joint because compression means that uh, the member should be the member vector arrow should be going towards the joint. So that's what you guys want to write in a pencil so you can fix that. So we have that. So AD is equal to 2,000 in compression. Great. Uh, we can also find the sum of the forces in the Y direction. So sum of the forces in the Y direction set those equal to zero. Well, guess what? There's no other members on the Y direction or forces. So right away we know that AB is equal to zero. No compression, no tension. It's just chill it.